Um, I like Lisa and maybe from Karen to everyone online. I know there's been some work on that uh, collaborative project. My feeling is that we don't have enough people in our community who are technology savvy enough to create these types of things that could be shared on a greater platform. That's just my own feeling. I don't know if that's true or not. So on the one hand, I think something that we have to think about is, is an open source model viable? It's not viable. Um, again, back to the funding issue, who would support it under what conditions? Would it be open? Would it be you know, shareable? And, uh, so anybody could comment. It's my favorite. My name is Adam Sopla. I'm a Shipsman Inside Fellow. I've worked for Dan in the past. Um, I, I wanted to know um, if to outsourcing this type of so exploring different models of technological um, advancement in, in SNL and whatnot, whether it would be to have a current, you know, Jewish developers, let's say Westminster Seminary, um, or outsourcing it, you know, and looking at this as more of a private enterprise rather than the, um, spend a lot of time calling philanthropic dollars and, you know, starting a private entity outside of the so I, I think if the, the goal was to from the job or profit from your that a you know, for profit model would probably be in the private but it would not create the environment of uh, ongoing open development that we're hoping for it would spark this revolution that would create a new generation of web application stores or alert. Right, if I do it, uh, if I have my privately owned digitized, sure, again, I can license them to anybody, but anybody who's not in a position to afford my licensing fee is locked out of the ability to offer development, which is what this whole issue that we're talking about is about. Right? Like this free for people to take that and manipulate it in new ways so that they can generate new products that meet the needs and vision and arrive. And the applications are limitless in terms of what people can come up with and how they code around it. The issue is having the access to which to begin. If this data was in one place and there was what's known as an API for people uh, in their programming to tap into that data and call it in the way that they need it, then you would see, I think, lots of developers in the Jewish state and in the Christian throwing themselves at creating new projects based on that just access to that data to the alone for your way of new projects. Have you or Meredith, um, who also spoke to this a little, um, and also uh, Lisa, who spoke about the past tech generation, given thought to um, how and whether we should um, commodify or re-commodify um, Torah and, and mitzvot, as you highlighted, as, as things for people to, to use in the way that you just heard. Uh, is there a, a way to recommodify those, or are people just kind of accessing my Jewish learning for tidbits? I think there is another model that, that I have been thinking about, and we're just dropping kind of this conversation. Do you need to go to the Ideally, okay. Um, which is that wait, wait, wait. Before we uh, hang up, let me make one phone comment. This is Ari David Al. Um, I just wanted to end on a note reminding people that when we talk about Jewish education or technology with Jewish education, it's important to realize that Jewish education is no longer bound by religious instruction. So I just wanted to throw that out for, for us to uh, be thinking about as we move forward. Um, I, I think there, there's another kind of model that exists in between the the really institutionalized educational world of what we have and some people happen to be sitting in the corner of this room that are all um, I, I think really thinking and are, are the more we're all tech people that actually do the things which is for those of us that work in, in Jewish institutions and despite the current um, economic crisis climate um, we're doing okay our institutions are open some kind of model where this is one called Bikorim taking off Joshua Venture why we don't have one for people to be doing something in between a fellowship program where my Jewish learning has to outsource this technology to this one guy out in Albany who doesn't know tiddly squat about what he's doing and our Therefore, our tech is holding back. I get to hire Russell away. For half of his time, Russell has to be my webmaster. Russell has to answer my stupid technology questions and fix my email and make my site work. And for the other 15 hours that Russell is working at my 
Jewish learning, Russell gets to innovate, and Russell gets to be a Bronfman Fellowship. My bosses aren't in the room, and I know they're not on mega meetings, so that's okay. Um, but I, I, I hear what Harleen is saying, that the, the, the scope is so big, and I think for funders, and for even for non-funders, the people that don't know this realm, there is a comfort in giving a, an already established nonprofit that has a track record the money to do something with it, and I think there's a comfort from the, non from, from the institutional sector of us being able to have someone that can offer other expertise, and there's certainly comfort for you guys of having a salary with benefits and vacation days. Um, so, just as a third kind of in-between option. Okay, I'm going to give Dan one very brief last word, and then we're going to break for dinner. So uh, I did this project in January, uh, a blog called 31 Days, 31 Ideas, where every day in January you posted a new idea for a Jewish innovative project. Um, and um, the last thing was what I called Jubal Labs. The idea of opening a laboratory inside a major Jewish organization where you hire away the best Jewish web developers and programmers and techies who are thinking about these issues and actually give them the institutional support inside of an established organization to develop uh, tools that address the needs of the wider Jewish community. They could be an in-house web development shop for all the Jewish organizations in the country as long as, you know, like they have the kind of overhead covered and the fundraising covered and the back office covered, they can be left to focus on what they do best, which is not fighting for dollars, but actually coming up with new products that address the needs of the American Jewish community. I want to thank our three panels for getting us going. I'm going to, you know, exercise discipline and break us here. Um, and we will, uh, dinner is, has been set up over there. We actually put up on the lights now so that you can actually see that dinner is there. Uh, please help yourself.